Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the video today, I am going to show you how I painted this piece. It's really solid, very pretty, but it looked a little bit dated, so I've given it a complete refresh, and this is one I'm going to be keeping for my own home. So as always, we're going to start with a little bit of prep and that included removing all the old paperwork out of the bureau that was left in it. I think they were actually the original receipts from this piece. So it's not a really old piece. It's solid. It's very well made, but that varnish is very dated and I'm not a fan and I'm keeping it. So I started out by vacuuming the whole piece. There were some rather large spiders in there but it made my life easier with that whole middle section just pulling out all the little cubbies, that whole thing just pulls out. So that made it a lot easier. I also took off those handles. Um, not personally a fan of that style. Again, I feel like they date it a little bit. So I took them off. I did keep them just in case I can use them on a future project. And then I cleaned all of those little cubbies with Dixie Bell's White Lightning and water and then gave it a good rinse off. The handles that were on all of those little cubbies did not come off, so I had to leave those in place. And then because I took the old handles off the exterior of the piece, I obviously had holes to fill in, so I used Dixie Mud in black because I'm going to be painting the cabinet black. So quickly flash to outside where I've got some new handles waiting. The reason I did it now is because I wanted a chance for them to dry. And I'm just using a coat of spray paint to give them a base in order for me to work on. So this is just a coat of spray paint. They are originally silver, but the colour that I'm spraying on is oil rub bronze, which is a slightly warmer tone. And then I've just left them to dry in the sun back to the inside so all of those little cubbies had to be scuff sanded now I'm just using an old bit of sandpaper anything around uh, 120 to 220 grit is fine for a scuff sand usually and then I scuff sanded the exterior with my electric sander because obviously I had a, quite a lot of large flat surfaces so I could just do that really quickly with my electric sander and as I mentioned I'm going to be using black the colour that I'm using is caviar it's from Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint range and I'm just adding a little bit of water in there and that's just going to make the paint slightly thicker I'm just shaking it like it's a margarita to make sure the water and the paint are all mixed together really evenly so you can see the consistency there it's slightly thinner than usual and that's because I'm going to distress this quite a lot and it's just going to make my life a lot easier if I apply the paint in a slightly thinner consistency than usual. So the idea was I was going to paint all of the kind of moving parts of the interior and then leave some of the warm toned wood as a contrast. That changed later down the line but that's what I'm doing right now. That was my plan at this moment in time. But projects evolve as they go on and I realised that I just did not like any of that warm tone wood at all. So as I mentioned, this paint has got a little bit of water added to it to make it slightly thinner than usual. And that just means that it's going to make it a lot easier for me to distress later on once the paint has dried it also gives a really kind of flawless finish because the paint is a lot thinner I barely got any kind of brush strokes or anything at all so if you are struggling with brush strokes it is worth just adding maybe a little bit of water into your paint not too much you can see the coverage on here is still pretty good and just making sure that you mix your paint really evenly so it's a nice consistency and painting it on and I'm, I guarantee you won't get any brush strokes you get a really really smooth flawless finish So to distress, I'm going to use a Dixie Bell sanding sponge. These are equivalent to a 220 grit. And the reason that I'm using these is because I want a really soft distress finish. So obviously the harsher the sandpaper that you use, the more kind of harsh the distress it, that you get, the effect that you get. This is just going to give me a really soft 
faded, distressed look, as opposed to any kind of harsh lines. So that's why I'm using a sanding sponge, and that's why I added a little bit of water to the paint, just to make my job slightly easier. So I'm concentrating on all the edges, and that's just gonna help define sort of any detail on this bureau. Obviously the interior has quite a lot of nice detail. The exterior, not so much, a little bit flat, but I'm concentrating on the draw edges. And I also take the draw out when I'm distressing and distress around the area where the draw fits into the carcass. So that gives a nice consistent finish and it's not distressed in some areas and not in others. And the beauty of editing is that I can literally just chop now and hey presto, the rest of the desk is distressed. You don't have to sit and watch me do all of the drawers. So what I'm doing now is just getting a microfiber cloth and removing any dust on the surface before what I thought was gonna be the next stage, which was applying wax, but no, let's make my life a little bit more difficult. I decided that red varnish just had to go in every single area. So I took all of the red varnish off the struts that pull out. These pull out with, they don't pop out as the, the lid lifts down like some desks do. You have to pull these out manually. Um, but I just couldn't deal with that varnish. So I got my Festool and removed it. And as I mentioned, I was gonna leave some of the existing finish in the interior and just work with it, but I just couldn't, I couldn't leave it. It was just too red and just too nope. So I got my Festool out and sanded all that as well. Obviously it made it a lot easier because the entire middle section just lifted out. I only sanded back as far as that needed to be. I didn't need to sand back all the way to the back of the piece. And then I did the lift down lid, drop down lid as well. And the sides so that it all looked the same basically so there was not any sign of that red varnish anywhere in sight so when that was done i decided to make my life even harder by applying a stencil on the interior of the bureau this is just going to break up that kind of plain look to the interior because we all know i don't really do plain so I'm using a roller for speed, I'm using the retro lattice stencil, and I'm using caviar, but not the watered down version. You do not want to water your paint down to use with a stencil. So also don't answer the phone halfway through applying a stencil as well, because I did that and it was quite hard to get going again. Anyway, what you want to do is just make sure you work in small sections, hold your stencil down, if you're a bit of a daredevil like me, or if you like to play it safe, you can use tape to tape it down in place, or you can also use a low tack spray adhesive and that holds it in place as well. So you remember me saying my plan changed on this piece. I was originally gonna work with some of that ready varnish and leave it as a bit of a contrast, but it just didn't look right. Also it wouldn't fit in with my decor because I don't really have any kind of wood tones in that shade. So I took all the little drawers out that were already painted and then scuff sanded the rest and then applied two coats of the caviar that I already had with the water added to it. I used a artist brush from Dixie Bell because obviously it's such a teeny tiny space. Two coats of that so that basically everything matched on the inside and the out. And then because I'd used quite a lot of distress techniques on the exterior of the bureau, I thought it was only right that I kind of matched that on the inside as well. So once the stencil was completely dry, don't attempt to distress before because you'll just smudge the paint. I then took my electric sander to it. Now I'm hardly pressing on at all here. If I was to press on, it would basically remove all of the stencil. So I just pressed really lightly to get a more kind of faded look. And then finally, I'm gonna use brown wax over the top of the caviar, which is gonna give a really kind of rich, but 
also kind of a vintage look to this. So I'm using Bestang Wax in brown from Dixie Bell. I'm also using the Bestang brush to apply this with. Sometimes I use a sponge to apply wax, sometimes I use a brush. The brush for this one was just easier because I had lots of kind of little nooks and crannies to get into. And it's just, it was a lot quicker for this particular piece. So you can see, obviously I'm applying it really liberally and I'm not kind of being too precious about, you know, how even it is at this point because I'm going to buff it off in a second. So whilst that brown wax is sitting, I'm going to go back to my handles that have been drying for a while now. I'm going to use the same caviar that I used to paint the bureau. So this is the one that's got a little bit of water added in. And I'm just going to paint that thin down caviar paint all over these handles. And then with a rag, I'm just going to wipe it away. So it almost acts as a bit of a glaze. Obviously, these handles have got some detail on them. So I'm just going to dab the excess caviar away. And that's just going to leave a little bit of the black paint in all of the recesses. Once all of those handles were done, I just set them to one side to dry down. And then I took the majority of the wax off with a paper towel. So this is a shop cloth and it's like a, a heavy duty paper towel and they don't shed on your furniture. Obviously when you are buffing wax and removing the excess, you need something that's lint free and not gonna shed on your piece. So for now, I'm just removing the excess with this shop cloth because I did apply it really liberally. And then once the majority of the excess wax was taken off with a shop cloth, I went in with a super soft microfiber cloth and just buffed it to a really nice sheen. It's really important to buff wax once you've applied it, otherwise it won't ever dry down and it will feel really tacky and sticky. And then as if by magic, the handles have been applied onto the bureau. I did it, I just didn't film myself because me with a drill is not pretty. So I'm going to use gilding wax to give these some more kind of dimension and I'm also in the process of changing them from silver to gold. So I'm just using bronze initially to kind of warm this tone up a little bit. Also it's gonna give me more of an antique vibe and I'm just using my finger and then taking the excess off on a rag so that I haven't got a huge clump of product on my finger. And then I'm just really gently kind of dusting over that kind of three dimensional carved surface Obviously the caviar is still in the background, acting as kind of that darker area to give me that 3D effect. I'm then gonna use copper. So the bronze has not dried. This is straight after the bronze has been applied. I'm gonna go in with copper. Now this is gonna mix the two slightly because the bronze, like I say, is not dry. You can mix these two colors together this way. You could also mix them together if you take um, a little bit out of the tubs and mix them together officially, but I'm just going to do it this way. So you can see how much that copper is warming the tone of the handles up. It also matches the warm tone of the wood where I've distressed. So I feel like this is kind of pulling it all together. So again, I'm just using my finger and just going over the areas that I'd already applied the bronze. And that's just going to give me a nice mixture of the two. And then the final thing I did once this had sat for a couple of days is to give the interior some extra protection. Now I'm going to be using this as a desk, as would most people, I would imagine, uh, with a drop down lid like this. I'm going to be doing a little bit of work at it. So I'm going to use clear coat in flat and I put three coats on. And obviously because Bestang Wax is water-based, that's absolutely fine. But just make sure the wax has completely dried before you do it. And here's a little close-up of the interior. I also stenciled the pull-out arms just so that they match the interior, attention to detail and all that. Here's what it looks like with the drop-down lid down. And this is the final stage shot. I am super pleased it's in situ and I'm sat at it now doing my voiceover for my video. 
as always thank you very much thank you very much for watching the video it's always your views are always really appreciated by me and it helps my channel grow and all the things so once again thank you for watching make sure if you aren't already hit the subscribe button and i will catch you next time bye